Hi everybody, Happy New Year to you all and may I wish you success for 2025 and the years ahead. So I really wanted to show you a new project today that I've been working on with a timber frame manufacturer over the last couple of weeks, just before Christmas in fact. And basically this was a, re a really interesting sort of timber framed eco home type structure. And the idea here is that we're actually able to model in Vectorworks using the timber framing tool, pretty much every single component that you're gonna find in the project. Now we basically built this model fairly meticulously using lots of different design layers and that enabled us to generate some schedules of all of the various elements of this particular project frame by frame. So it was a real bonus for the firm that I was working with, uh, working in 3D and a real challenge for me to actually kind of like work on a project of this level of complexity and actually build this using the framing module, but very, very satisfying nonetheless. Now you notice that we've actually built the model in lots of different layers. The reason we chose to use layers and classes was layers were for each panel, as you can see. And that meant what we could do was basically generate some sheet layers where we could actually extract not only drawings of each panel, but also things like schedules. So here's one of the sheet layers, for example, and you can see using the framing member tool, not only could we generate schedules, we could actually use the data tag tool to give those references as well. So very, very useful uh, use of the timber framing tool in Vectorworks, and it's a really amazing tool if you haven't used it already. So I think this was a very valuable exercise for the firm that I was working with, but I want to show you how we can now turn the model that we made into a transition, or if you like, phasing animation. Oh, here's the spreadsheet, by the way, and it was really great. You know, we were able to edit the criteria, pull off not only the framing member criteria, but also the particular layer, and also exclude some items like the panels if we didn't want those um, itemized on the spreadsheet as well. Okay, so let's get going with this tutorial. Now here's the entire model, as you can see, with all the layers visible. So if I just go down to my save views that I've already prepared, you'll see that I've actually kind of like basically created a number of save views. And what I've done here is turn the visibility on of some of those layers. So I'll show you how that works in a moment, but just to skip ahead, I'm going to basically publish those images. So I'm gonna scroll down and select all of those. Those were the uh, first batch that I did, the 40, and basically here is the other 19. So what we're gonna do is publish those as image files, and you'll see that basically if we go for each page as a separate image, probably 200 DPI is fine. And basically I'm gonna export those as JPEGs actually. So what we're gonna do is basically export those into a new folder. Um, let's just kind of pop those in an image folder and create that so we can export. Okay, good. You can see Vectorworks is rapidly exporting those image files and already in a flash it's done. Now the next little trick is a really nice one is I go into uh, CapCut, which is my kind of video editing software of choice. I've really enjoyed CapCut recently for making my videos and it's definitely something I recommend as a free or relatively low cost software. But the real trick is to select all of those images in sequence. And you can see I've got them all now that I can drag them down onto my timeline. So really, really nice in that I've got these frames, if you like, of individual images, which basically go together to make this sort of transition or phasing video. Now next up, I can create those into a compound clip in CapCut by right clicking after I select them all. And that means that we can now speed up that clip and adjust that speed as much as we want. So what this means is, you know, these sort of uh, 18 images that I created, and I did another one you'll see in a minute with 40 images. Basically, we can essentially phase them quite rapidly and we can play through that video to show the different phasing as required. Now, there's no way uh, to break this down otherwise in Vectorworks. So it is a case of saving these views one by one. But really, this makes it pretty easy to do this time lapse. And basically, now I can export this, uh, maybe use it in my social media or kind of on my website, just to show you know the progression of the uh, progress of this project in terms of manufacturing and so on. Excellent. So I'd like to basically have a look at this uh, one more time with you. And let's look at this in a slightly different way. So here I'm just reviewing the video that I just exported, and I can think you'll agree it's quite a nice as a little sort of time lapse. Now I just wanted to try one other thing, um, so I'm just going to basically drop in a hemisphere here so that I can kind of get some bounds for the project. 
Now, I thought it'd be interesting to show you that I could do this in perspective view as well. And I'm going to create an animation orbit path in order to generate a camera, a 360 degree camera around my project. So there is my camera there. And you can see now I can basically activate the camera, click play, and I've got the whole model spinning around in perspective view, which is really nice. So this is a nice little trick that I can use to basically select my individual frames. So when we go to the different frames, you can see, I can basically go down to my save views, activate my camera, and basically skip through one at a time in order to visualize these frames. So all I'm really doing here is just going through one at a time, turning on a few of the different panels that I want, and then basically I can go through to my save views, and if I do want to, I could basically right click create a new save view or I could actually right click and redefine if I've already got a save view there together. So let's redefine a V1 just to have those particular panels. So now I just need to basically click on the keyframe to forward to the next position of the camera with the orbit animation, add in some more panels that I want to see on that particular frame, uh, right click and redefine my V2. And just keep repeating this process. So let's skip to the next keyframe turn the rest of those wall panels on, I right click and redefine. And you can see this process is, you know, while it takes a little bit of time, is extremely straightforward. So now let's turn on the party walls and the glue lamp beams. Let's go through and right click and redefine that view. Don't forget every single time you just need to review so we can review those frames if we want to. So just remember to click onto the little keyframe button to skip to that next view. Okay, so let's keep going with this uh, in a bit more detail. So let's carry on with our next view. So let's skip over to our next keyframe. Let's turn on these uh, internal first floor panels. And once again, let's right click down on V5 and redefine that view. So a very, very simple process really. You've just got to be organized in your methodology about how you kind of like sequence through. And basically there's no limit really to the individual sequencing. Now, one thing VectorWorks won't do is sort of animate things pulling apart or exploding or pulling in from the side or anything like that. But in terms of a nice, simple animation that you can do directly in your CAD and BIM software, I think you'll agree this is uh, something that is actually extremely useful. Maybe I'll plan to do a version of this using Twinmotion or D5. There's some nice animation capabilities there. But I think, you know, if you want to keep it nice and simple and do it within your design software, you know, this is a great little technique. And if you've kind of modeled your building in a way that is quite structured with different design layers or classes, this should be fairly straightforward for you. It was definitely a benefit modeling the building in all these individual layers for each framing panel, uh, simply because, as I say, we really wanted to extract that information on diff different sheets. But, you know, as a nice side benefit, this ability to animate and give this sort of phasing transition was something that I thought would be super useful. Excellent. So you can see we're almost there. We're going to now turn on all of the remaining roof panels, go through and redefine that final view. And I think that's pretty much all of the views used up. So what we'll do is we'll just go through to those others and redefine uh, 13. So now basically I should have at least 13 or 14 views of the project with everything on. So it's quite exciting. So let's go through and when we're ready, we can basically export these as well. Now let's have a quick review. So we'll just review these one more time by double clicking those save views. And you can see the model is looking really good. It's definitely sort of animating at the beginning. So just before we carry on looking at the amazing new features in Vector is 2025, I just wanted to reach out to you and offer my teaching and training services that I offer all over the world via Zoom. I'm an experienced architect with over 20 years experience, but I've been a VectorWitch user my entire career, and I really love teaching people from small practices to individuals, whatever level you currently are. I can help you on 2D, 3D, BIM, or various visualization workflows. I also really love teaching VectorWitch in combination with things like Twinmotion, Enscape and D5 Render for 3D visualization. So wherever you are in the world, if you'd like to reach out and improve your VectorWit skills, please book a call or drop me an email and I'll be very, very pleased to help. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Excellent. So this is a very fun process to do. Um, what I would then recommend is, as I say, you can go and export these save views. You don't need to create sheets or anything like that. So we could just go straight through, through to publish. 
And what we'll do is we'll select those views and we'll just create them as image files once again. So if you do want to, just add them across, select them, um, change it from PDF, which is the default, over to image. Don't forget to just click onto the options potentially and just change the image format to the right size as well. Okay, so let's export these as a new batch of images. You can see that it works again, very quick at exporting these individual save views as images. And once again, here is the trick in CapCut if you missed it the first time. So we'll create a new project. We'll basically click import. Make sure you get them in the right order. That's quite important because the first one and the last one you select are actually the keyframes. So look, if you do them in reverse, you'll get the last frame first. So do make sure you get the first frame, then the last frame. So let's just import those one more time. So make sure we get the uh, right images this time. So let's select all of those images in the right order and we'll import them and drag and drop them in. Now you can do a scrub through using the preview there and you can see the animation unfolding as we speak. Then we can right click in CapCut and make those into a compound clip. And finally, that means that we can easily speed them up maybe like eight times so that that whole animation just runs for sort of 10 seconds or so. And as it spins round in perspective, we're building up the uh, layers as we go. So it's a nice little clip I can use in my final presentation. So you can also things like CapCut is a great bit of software, things like uh, crop things very easily and basically do what you need to do in terms of video effects. So I do hope you've enjoyed this uh, little video just showing you how to use Vectorworks to do sort of phasing diagrams, if you like, and actually animate those into movies. Now, I will be planning to make a load more videos this year. So please, if you're not subscribed, uh, do drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Probably about a third of my users or regular viewers are subscribed, but plenty of you are not subscribed yet. So it'd be wonderful to hit my target and really kind of break through the barrier of over 20,000 subs this year. I've got lots of new videos planned as well as some exciting announcements on new training courses coming soon. So I look forward to you joining the channel and thanks ever so much for watching.